Hello, my name is Manjot Singh. I'm lead enterprise architect at MariaDB. Um, I had a question on YouTube from uh, Ahmad, and he was asking uh, if I could explain what lock tables does. Well, lock tables is a command that enables uh, client sessions to acquire locks uh, on a table explicitly for the purpose of um, uh, forcing other uh, users to not be able to read or write to that table. And you can lock tables with, uh, with read locks, write locks, um, a read lock that will allow uh, concurrent inserts. Um, and, and when you use this command, it basically uh, reduces the ability to have concurrent use of that table. Um, I usually discourage people from using lock tables unless you have very specific reasons to. Um, and you can also do uh, lock tables with um, wait or no wait. So you, you could do lock tables and then wait for other people to, to stop using that table. But in general, um, I would trust your storage engine such as InnoDB or your transactional model uh, to, to acquire those locks when you can. Um, more often than not, it's explicit locking uh, that causes me to go in and, and help a customer with uh, concurrency or performance issues. Uh, and we'll find that command and we'll say, well, how can we remove that so that we can have better performance? Um, so some of the limitations that lock tables has, um, it doesn't work when you use Galera cluster. So if you're using Galera cluster, um, you could crash the, uh, the cluster in certain scenarios. So if you're on that, do not use this command. Uh, another thing to note is if you're using InnoDB, um, if you don't have the InnoDB table lock system variable set to one, um, it basically lock tables doesn't do anything so that's something to keep in mind uh, it also um, doesn't work in auto commit um, it also uh, lock tables will also uh, implicitly commit a transaction so if you do start transaction and then lock tables your your transaction commits at that point um, if you uh, and and basically um, if you start a transaction after you've locked it will uh, release any locks uh, acquired by by lock table so it doesn't work great in in those scenarios with transactions either um, and one of the other suggestions uh, that I would I would make is there's there is a get lock available where you can create a named lock uh, instead of using uh, lock tables. Uh, so instead of locking specific data, uh, you could use some logic around a named lock, um, you know, obtaining a lock with that name of, of the string that you've given it in some sort of timeout. Uh, and then there's also select for update. But again, when people use select for update, which only works within transactions, I tend to find that there's a lot of concurrency or performance issues uh, with that application. And many times you can design a way these types of explicit locks. Now that said, there's definitely great use cases, for example, a bank uh, or, or other, um, other uh, industries and, and uh, applications. Um, with select for update, uh, it's basically a, a lock that doesn't allow reads, writes uh, uh, on, a, uh, on a table or uh, allow um, acquiring locks. Now, if you're like in InnoDB, it will be basically on uh, rows that were, were scanned or used within that, uh, within that command or statement. Uh, so that's um, basically lock tables in a nutshell. Um, there's definitely more uh, caveats to that. I encourage you to, to read uh, about it uh, some more. Uh, and especially depending on the storage engine, for example, InnoDB has some more caveats on how locking works and it has its own uh, internal latching mechanism. Uh, so um, thank you for your time and I hope that that helped answer your question.